Only an irresponsible government abdicates the responsibility to our people and enact laws to further fleece the same people. Infectious Disease Control Bill, MWM, Motion Without Movement. The Speaker of Nigerian Lower Parliament, known as the House of Representatives, recently introduced the bill on the floor of the House, known as the Infectious Disease Bill. The essence of the bill, if passed, is to replace the old Quarantine Act of 2004 and give government a legal backing for the control of infectious diseases. And typical of our most politicians, he had to travel far to Singapore to copy word for word an Infectious Disease Act enacted by them in 1977 during the authoritarian single party dictatorship rule of Lee Kuan Yew. And to further expose the lack of adaptation and insensibility of the sponsor, the only difference between the Singaporean version and ours in the name of the country and the Director General. Anywhere there is Singapore, a speaker simply changed into Nigeria, and where you have director, he simply added the word general. You know, we love military titles. The provision of the bill, which seems to remind one of the hate speech and social media bill, sponsored by the same house sometimes last year, aims to create a new set of rules, which are not only in conflict with the provisions of the constitution, but gives the director general of the Center for Disease Control the powers of a policeman, a judge, and an executor as it empowers the center to arrest without warrant, declare any house an isolation center, and no liability shall lie against the DG or members of his team for any act or mission. That's section 71 of the bill. Section 58, in clear violations of the provisions of the constitution, empowers the DG or any member of his team to arrest without warrant any person he has reason to believe has infectious disease. So if the bill is passed, all of us have to carry certificate of non-compliance or Otherwise, you can be arrested without warrant as someone with infectious disease. Section 55 of the bills require any person to provide any book, document, or correspondence requested by the DG and allow him to unrestricted and unfettered power to enter as such any premises without warrant. That means any journalist, anybody can be arrested if in the opinion of the DG he has materials that might embarrass the center. How bad can this be? Now wait for this. Section 24 empowers a police officer to arrest without warrant and take to a place tag isolation center by the NCDC, anyone who is suffering from any infectious disease. That means if you have flu, cough, or even yawn close to any hail or whale or hater, which is an infectious disease, you can be isolated, depending, of course, on the person exercising the discretion. Section 20 empowers the DG to prevent any meeting at all, including this one. If in his opinion, that meeting will increase the spread of an infectious disease, I wonder how he can, on face value, determine who has infectious disease since it is in his opinion. With such laws, the Director General, which appears 134 times while the word disease appeared in the Acts 124 times, according to a journalist, David Hundei, might even be more powerful than our president. Section 17, 17 also empowers the DG to evict residents on the basis of overcrowding, yet government does not have houses to provide to anybody. The what part of the, part of the bill is Section 15, which contrary to the provisions of the Constitution on ownership of movable and immovable property, and pass the minister for the purpose of preventing the spread of infectious disease to declare any premises an isolation center, including yours and mine. And any person who lives or is suspected to have left an isolation center can be arrested without warrant. In fact, the word arrest without warrant appears 14 times in the bill. With such powers, police officers no longer need to have recourse to the Police Act, as all they need to do to it's just use the disease, uh, uh, Infectious Disease Control Act and arrest you without warrant. Boom. It is sad and unfortunate that a country where about 53% of the population do not have access to good drinking water and more than 40% of the population still openly defecate in water because of lack of toilets. One would have expected that any infectious disease control law would first and foremost task government to provide these basic needs to their people instead of looking for opportunities to declare people's personal properties as a solution center and arresting people without warrant, all in the name of controlling infectious disease. I would therefore advocate that this, the obnoxious sections in this infectious disease bill should not only be expunged, but it should be included in the bill that government should, as a matter of urgency, first and foremost, provide the needed basic and affordable education housing, clean environment, pot portable drinking water, and social infrastructure for majority of the people. With such infrastructure, government would have reduced disease, both infectious and non-infectious disease, drastically by at least 75%.
and any laws subsequently enacted to control infectious disease will not only be easy to implement, but would have the needed infrastructure, infrastructure backup to drive the process, rather than this copy and paste 1977 dictatorship piece of paper. I beg to leave. Can I, can I say that, um, you know, because um, thank you for this. David Hundeng, who he wrote this very powerful uh, story, uh, and I'm glad you brought him on the show um, a few weeks back. Um, it appears to me, reading what from, you know, listening to you again, because I read it on paper, but to hear this very powerful evocation, the way you delivered it, it just, it sounds to me as if government is actually more of a threat to our health and safety than even the diseases, the so-called diseases that they want to fight. Because it sounds to me that you just, you want to take away liberty, property rights, um, without doing the essential function of government, which is health, safety, and security. That's what you should provide for. You talked about people not having access to water, mass poverty, you are now in the poverty capital of the world, infrastructure is horrible. Do that first. Be like Singapore in terms of infrastructure, and then we can even say, okay, fine, at least we, you know, um, in Singapore, every person has a home by government. Everybody has a home. It's, it's not, uh, there's no Singaporean citizen who doesn't have a house provided by government. So, you, 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 you know, I mean, and it has obviously toilet, water, and all of those things. So, in, in a sense, I'm not excusing them, but in a sense, they, they, they can now even have the opportunity to carry out this kind of, uh, yeah. uh, uh, authoritarian. Uh, of, of, of authoritarian laws. Yes, um, honestly, I, I love, I mean, this advocacy is great. And I was just laughing through it because I think it's so embarrassing that we had to go out there and copy a 30-something year old act word for word and without even attempting to, you know, um, you know, change it a little bit, change it up so that we can modernize it. And as has been said, you know, we always like to place on our people a huge burden, yeah. but we never give them the same rights as the other people. So, you know, in Singapore, like you say rightly, the rights that the people have, you know, may even give the government the um, ability to place, place on them that kind of burden. But how, how, how do we do that here? The second thing is that, you know, apart from this lack of privacy, you know, abuse of our human rights, and the issue of stigmatizing these infectious diseases. That's why we're going to see in places like um, Kano, for example, where there will be a huge um, surge, and people won't talk about it because, you know, if you have the right to arrest people, and, you know, you are placing a burden of shame on the population. So even when people have these um, diseases, they're not going to come out and tell you they have it because it's like you're going to punish them for having it. So it's... Um, it's really um, it's shining a light on us that it, it's not positive at all. I want to just say it speaks to motive fundamentally to me because, you know, if someone can put this thing together and nowhere in his mind does he think, oh, you know, I, I have some responsibility to make this thing even look like I'm providing some kind of care. I don't, he doesn't seem to... I don't know, is it that a lack of intelligence or, and then so you say, okay, maybe the man himself is trying to be devious, but then who are those around him? They too are acting like they can't interrogate this the king's thing. Mentality. They're waiting the king for Libras no or they're waiting for David the Hunday. Yeah, so I'm just thinking we can't even masquerade because even the king, like you mentioned, you know, you have some authoritarian fathers and stuff, but at least they care enough to provide for their children. This one is not even, he's not even masquerading. He's not even trying to pretend. He's just openly trying to frisk us. And, so I'm, I'm still looking for how we can checkmate some of these, because we're dealing with the executive yet, they have their issues, but now you have the, the legislatures. How a legislature... Which is supposed to check on the executive. How can we... How can we now even acting, acting these, worse than, yeah, some of these acting worse than the executive. Yeah, have some of these frivolous bills, Crazy. because that's where it starts. How can we, we get jettison them or even put some kind of, uh, I don't know, charge? They must suffer some kind of... How can you come up with some of these bills? They're, they're an insult to us as a people. So I don't know how we can do it, but it's not enough to say we refuse it. We need to make sure we penalize those who raise such bills. I just don't know where to start to do that. Maybe Libros has an answer, but Chuka. I think I'm surprised that um, it's only because we're in Nigeria. Um, Bajabi Amila would have lost, would have had to step down yeah. after this scandal. Because it's a scandal, and we're just talking as if it's um, something, you know, like a naughty thing that happened. Uh, it's a scandal, big one. If um, Cummins is a scandal in England, then this is an even more massive scandal in, the, in, in Abuja. But lawyers need to get up and do more. Yeah. 
I'm yeah. sure that, that's the way I feel. Yes. Because we can only yeah, fight yeah. these things legally anyway. Yeah, thank you, Chuka, for that. Um, and, um, mm. well, like Emeka said, we aim to tell it like it is, no matter whose us is God. I added the second part, though. Do keep your comment coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broad broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, when we'll be doing what we do best in partnership with you, let's keep advocating for a better society. See you. Bye-bye. Let me do like a new okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank Lovely you. Much. seeing you. Bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.